in space, everyone can see your dodgy VFX work. Hi, my name is Ryan Lane, and welcome to my review channel. So for today's movie, I will be reviewing ISS, directed by Gabriella Cowperthwaite and starring Ariana DeBose, Chris Messina, John Gallagher Jr., Masha Mashkova, Costa Ronan, and Pilu Asbeik. So it's the present day. They're words, not mine. They, they are intentionally hella vague about some uh, details in this movie. Anyway, like I said, present day, and Kira and Christian, played by Ariana DeBus and John Gallagher Jr. respectively, they have just arrived at, well, the ISS, or, you know, the International Space Station. There they meet and familiarize themselves with fellow astronauts uh, living aboard the station, including American leader Gordon, played by Chris Messina, and Russian cosmonauts, uh, Veronica, well, Veronica, it's spelled with a W, uh, played by Masha Mashkova, uh, Nikolaj, uh, played by Kosta Ronin, and Alexei, played by Pilu Azbek. While they are there, there are clearly some underlying tensions between the two groups, as uh, many astronauts are uh, ex-military, and so because of that, and coupled with the fact that, you know, America and Russia have, at best, you know, cold relations between each other, this could cause some tension, but not on board the ISS. There they've agreed to a mutual do not discuss politics situation, and to a certain extent, it's kept the peace, even made things amicable, so much so to the point where Gordon and another fellow Russian cosmonaut, Veronica, they have, you know, a bit of a not-so-secret, secret late relationship. And... Yeah, this piece is unfortunately interrupted when a thermonuclear war breaks out between the U.S. and Russia, thus prompting both governments to send their astronauts' orders to take the ISS by any means necessary. And by any means necessary, they mean kill. So, writing-wise, this film definitely wants to have its geopolitical cake and eat it too, like... There's never so much as a single explanation or solitary line of expository dialogue explaining why the two countries have, you know, busted out the literal big guns or, well, rather the biggest guns ever made by man and engaged in thermonuclear war. And honestly, that's okay. For the type of movie that they wanted to make, that's all right. I mean, the thermonuclear war is just a means by which to engage in cloak and dagger uh, thrills aboard a space station. And again, like I said, that works pretty well. When the film is focusing on the characters and how they're trying to ascertain who they can trust, who they can't trust, you know, the changing dynamics in the alliances, because this isn't just a simple, you know, Americans versus Russians. Like, the film actually makes some interesting alliances between the characters that are uh, formed and broken in organic and character-driven manner. Uh, when the writing isn't focused on this aspect, though, things start to go wrong. The writing isn't very subtle with its setups. At one point, like when uh, Vera gets on board the ISSS, she's taking on a literal guided tour of all the setups for things that can and will go wrong. And like clockwork, they kind of do. Again, it's not terrible. It's just, you know, it begs for maybe a little more subtlety is all. And there's you know, with one uh, setup being a particularly clunky metaphor, you know, for, you know, what's going to happen aboard the ISS. And also there's, again, I know this is, you know, this is about a movie where thermonuclear war breaks out and, you know, astronauts are in space fighting each other. It's like, okay, but there's one moment that uh, pushes, you know, d belief at one point and it's like, you know, you know, it's like you think uh, something has happened to a character, but then the movie's like, psych, it didn't happen. But then what we thought didn't happen literally happens like barely two minutes later. It's kind of like, and you reversed that decision because, uh, yeah. Also, there's the pacing. If this film were two hours long, 
I'd say it has pretty good pacing. But it's not. It's 90 minutes long. And because of that, the film feels slow. I, this film seriously could have benefited from a rewrite or two. I Because to sort of compress scenes together. Because especially in the first act, it kind of feels like, you know, the actors are sort of spinning their gears just waiting for disaster to happen. And I, and perhaps, and there are just a few other dead air moments, you know, where characters are just sort of standing around and not much is happening. So, yeah, again, rewrite the script a little bit and I think we could have had some, a decent lean 90-man thriller on our hands. Thankfully, the film has solid performances to elevate the material. Each actor does a pretty equally good job of getting you to emotionally identify with them and understand their decisions while also provoking suspicion of their motives. The cast all does manage to ride the fine, that fine line very well. Oh yeah, so this movie was made on a less than $14 million budget, million dollar budget and boy does it show. The VFX range from okay at best to dodgy at worst. Like, for example, there's the attempts at simulating a microgravity environment inside the ISS. It's okay. I mean, there you have to understand, like, anytime, you know, they're floating around, there's sort of an awkwardness to it because the any microgravity scenes inside the ship are, they, the scenes are edited the, to hell and back because you can tell they're trying to edit around the effects work and trying and to hide the fact that they're using wires. Plus they try to cheap out of using the microgravity effect by having little footholds for astronauts to put their feet in. Which, but again, it's not terrible. It's just, I don't know, a little, feels off. But again, it's functional. I get it, $14 million budget. But then there's the space station itself. The exterior is rendered eh, pretty well. But when a character has to do a spacewalk, ooh, the budget just did not, could not handle it. It's, sometimes it works well enough, but you could tell that they either needed more money or more time because there are some moments where the space station looks fake as all hell. And they know this because they cut back to the astronauts' close-ups a lot of times. So, though it can't always escape the gravitational pull of its mediocre VFX and its clunky storytelling, ISS proves to be a uh, decent addition to the canon of surprisingly competent but not all that good uh, January thrillers. So with all that in mind, I will be giving ISS 3 out of 5 stars. Anyway, thank you for watching. Have a good rest of your day. If you like this review and would like to see more like it, be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. And for today's comment section prompt of the day, what is your favorite thriller set in space?